Hey guys, Al Spence here for Gulf Coast of Models again. Um, remember we left off? We glued. Guys, I took, I pulled the distributor cap off this engine. This was meant for the demo to mark to show you where to drill on the heads, remember? Making sure you're in between your headers and such. So, I, uh, I got a build I'm doing. And, uh, we'll slag on that. And I need this motor built. I'm working on this now, currently. So, this is for that Corvette build. Uh, the Corvette Pro Mod, Pro Street. I'm doing a Pro Mod out of it. Not quite sure the body yet. I got the body painted, but... Anywho... So, I need this motor done, so I just glued the distributor cap back on to this one before it set up last night. Now, it's been sitting since last night, so, without further ado, you got your holes drilled along the bottom of your distributor here. Now, sometimes I'll take my hobby knife and I'll hit the holes beforehand just to get any plastic or little slag off the drill bit that hung up in it. It'll save you a hassle when you're trying to poke that little wire in there thinking, what the heck? <clears throat> We've all been there. Okay. And I'm going to do the other side real quick. Like, it's pretty clean. I did these already. Had them waiting. Okay, now. Like I said, just fan them in. Form them. I've been an S back here, kind of. And let it run up along the manifold and the valve cover here. Okay? Then, I found if you start with the back one first, it's easier. You're going to want to have a pair of tweezers handy. Now, I take and I pin the wire down on the valve cover. Okay? And I found that if I put just a smidge of glue, basically just stick it into the tip of your glue or just put a little nib on it it kind of helps the boot slide on a little easier but you got to get moving now you can't you do not want it to set up before you got it seated where you want it on your valve cover so I mean your heads get a little snudge off there just wipe it on a little hair and this is the hard part Grab the boot. I rolled around on my fingers till I got the end of the barrel, the little boot sticking at me. Slide it on. Wipe some of the glue off. Now that helps it stay on there. The glue. While you do the next one real quick. Because I like to get at least two or three of them ready. And that way, when I glue one, I got the glue out. I just hit all three, stick all three in, and then do the last one. So let's show you my method for my madness. Again, just a little coating, I guess is a good word of it. I got my boots laying here on a little square piece of paper towels, you see. It keeps them from rolling around, and it's a little easier to grab. Again, I got the gold paper here only so you can see it better. I slide my boot on. I want to show you something here. This boot, if it was too big, if I cut it too long, I would slide it on the wire a little bit and make sure there's none sticking out of the end. And I just take my scissors and nip that boot and shorten it up a hair. And then shove it on up on the wire. You want about that much wire sticking out. I guess that's about a centimeter maybe. And I grab another boot, slide her up on there. Okay, this is going so smooth. I'm going to grab the last one and put a smidge of glue on just a hair. There we go. Slide me a boot up on there. I'm sorry, I keep getting out of the camera. I'm not used to bending over and leaning forward. I got to get a little... I'm getting a workbench on our new house. We got a new granite countertops and stuff in so my brother-in-law has to finish one bathroom the other one's finished so we're gonna be moving in here pretty quick 
So anyways, now I put a drop of glue. Literally, I hope you can see it. See it dangling there? It really is just a little drop. I even put a little on the second one because all this is doing is tacking up, guys. It's getting tacked up a little bit for you. It's going to help. So get your glue driplets on. I'm not going to do the third one. I mean the fourth right now. Now, I grab my tweezers and take, get a hold of the wire. Turn your wrist so that when you squeeze it, all you got to do is you rotate your wrist and you can bend the wire around to the hole. Okay? Like so. Pull it out a little bit, rotate it, bend it down. There's a song my grandson sings. Take it down, trashy town. <laughs> and I'll get my wire in right where she's going to go. Then I take my hobby knife and I slide my boot down. It's fairly forgiving. As you can see, I come close to them wires, but... Remember, if you have one too short like that by accident, you got your distributor wire here you can still use. So if you got one too short, don't freak out thinking you got to strip out that distributor cap, rip everything out. Again, put the wire in. Grab your hobby knife. Slide the boot down. And I'll dress the wire up. I was a little bit set, a little hump in it. See how it's got a little bit higher hump on this wire than this back one? I'll just take the wire and push it down the hole a little bit more. And again, you can dress these in when you get done. So grab your next wire, or wire. Put it down in there. I hope it stays. <laughs> Okay. Oh, I slid my paper towel. You gotta watch that. You lose these little boots, man. They go everywhere on you. There we go. Okay. Now, this one dried a little on me, so I'm just gonna smack a little dab of glue on it. It's like dippy do, just a dab will do you. Push it down with your hobby knife again. Shove the boot down to the top of the hole to where it's seated. You can see it coming together. Okay. I already got my last one here. I got the boot on. Put my drip driplet of glue on. Drop driplet. Is there in the military? It's called hurry up and wait, and everything's in triplicate. It's for you, the army, and anybody that don't give a crap that wants it. <laughs> okay. Now you gotta get that. Sometimes they'll pop out on you. You gotta hold them just for a second or two. I can tell you right now, when I do the other side, when I'm doing the other side, I'll occasionally get one or two wires into here and I'll flip this over and just tap the boots down to make sure they're all still in the hole and seated I mean you know this is not an exact science guys I <laughs> I didn't go to school or learn this anywhere so this is from trial and error and a lot more air so I come back over to this side now you're on the other side, dress your wire out a little bit, get your curvature in, got your wire there. A little sliver of glue on it just to help it slide on. Okay. And slide my boot on. It's a little tedious, but once you once you do two or three engines, guys, you'll find your own little shortcuts. You'll find your own what works for you. 
and it'll go better. Now, if you don't put glue on it, which you don't always have to, watch. I got pretty good lighting. I'm feeling decent, so... Look at that. As soon as I said that... It's just the glue seems like it helps it slide on just a little easier, you know? And again... If you flip, when you turn the engine and rotate the engine, it keeps your wire from sliding off and, and dropping in the floor and stuff. That's really why I started putting a little slither of glue on the end so it wouldn't keep slipping off and hitting the floor and losing them in the carpet. And Literally had a guy tell me the other day he was working on his model car and I talking to him and I said, so hey, how'd that? I can't remember what he was building now. He was trying to build a drag car, and he don't build a lot of them. He's kind of a street car, the old 40s, 50 car guy. He was trying to build like a drag strip Chevelle or something, or Camaro. I said, how'd that big Chevelle come out, that drag car? Send me a pic of that. He said I would, he said, but my dog ate it. Felt like it was back, right? The old high school thing. <laughs> dog ate my homework. <laughs> So I never did see his car or how it come out. The dog ate it. There, see, I kind of popped both these in together. Well, this particular wire, I know I got a little extra, so I'm going to push some wire down into the hole. Feed a little extra wire down. Look at there. Neither one of them stuck, see what I mean? I take your hobby knife though and press them down and they tend to stay a little bit bit well I'm making big L liar tonight all right now if it does that if you keep getting them popping out and you got a little extra wire shove your physically just push your boot up don't mess around with it shove that boot up there a little bit get you some wire get down in that head with okay see that now it's gonna mess around with me by golly I'll get her you just shove that back up on there and get your little glue on it now. Now watch this thing get a bite halt. A bite halt. That's what my uncle always said. That bass had that lure. He had a bite halt of it, but he let go. I never been up. My dad fished with him a lot. He liked casting. He couldn't stand a troll. He thought that was a lazy man's way, but Lord knows he catch more musky and stuff like that. <laughs> But he plugged. He loved to plug. And about every 10 casts, he was setting a hook, and I don't know what it was, but he swore to God something grabbed that lure and took off with it. I snagged a big old black snake up in Riley's or a 98 Reservoir up home. Big old black snake out of a blackberry brush that was hanging out over the water. And I set that hook on that thing. Well, I set it, I yanked it to get it out of the brush. My S11 Repella went up into the brush of that berry bush hanging over, and I'd actually snagged the side of a black snake about three and a half, four foot long. I put the wood to that thing, and that snake come asses and elbows, and that tail end over landed in our little bass boat, about a 14 foot one. And... My dad screamed. My dad jumped. That's the first time my pop ever smacked me in the back of the head hard enough to it about knock my chitlets out. <laughs> I don't know if he's mad at me for being dumb or for the snake hitting him in the face. I don't know what made me think of that, guys, but my dad's gone, so. No, he didn't get drunk or run off with a prostitute either. He passed away. <laughs> I can hear you, Rudy. <laughs> all right so i'm having a little trouble with this one so i gotta force it up on there okay got that last one up here set little glue again a dabble do you you see i i mess around and it's just i don't reach for my tweezers and it's a lot easier if you just take the time to grab them tweezers and use them hit the hole with the wire hobby knife press the boot down in line it up 
see that little glue on there? Sometimes you get a little white white glue or glue up on the top. You just take your hobby knife and rotate it and scrape that crap off there until the wire pops out and you gotta redo it. <laughs> I want that off there. I hate that. Okay, there we go. Little Joe's probably laughing his butt off on this one. The buddy said it looked like a monkey having sex with a football. Okay. There we go. Before I do that last one, I'll, I'll rotate this around. Make sure I got these guys all popped down and they're in there. And they are. Coming through the stretch. Next video, I'm going to get some... Order me some more hardware to make seat belts with. And I'll show you how I make my seat belts. I don't use material and ribbon and all that crap. I use a silver cellophane off a cigarette pack. Matter of fact, I got some laying right here. See that texture? Looks cool as heck. Uh, but I'll cut them out of this and then put my hardware on. Another thing you can do, you can use bell metal foil for the buckles on these like if you paint these like a black seat belt you can cut like a triangle or a hexagon shape little piece it's, it's hard to do it's a small piece of, of, of bare metal foil and use that to simulate a buckle and such poor man's seat belt you might say that or I'm gonna do carburetors so do a video y'all want to see how I do the carburetors how I make my little fittings out of beads and such we can do that you let me know I don't know when I'll get to her because I, I got a feeling we're gonna pull up and start moving stuff to the new house we got to my mama's sick fellers my mama's the dearest little redheaded well she's white headed now she's be a redheaded little hillbilly from West Virginia and a tough boy, tough I mean. She's got the Alzheimer's and now she's belching real bad and lost her appetite. She ain't eating, can't keep her hydrated. Now, pretty much heading for the Lord's hand, so I ain't real happy about that. Lost my daddy years ago, so. Okay, anyways, there, see? Now there's how you got your boots on. That's how I dress the wires. There's the cap. You seen how I made that? I see the white. I'll just take my silver paint and I use these little things here. I use it. Everybody asks me. I use this VO Mahler. This is for airbrushes metallic. It's thin, but sometimes you just want to put a thin layer. It dries better. Okay, this isn't though. I'll just take and get my brush out all right I got a detailing brush I can't it's down underneath me I'll chance this so you just take a little dab on here dab the top of that distributor cover it in I'll paint this silver I'll probably gonna end up painting it black later so but dab it in and it's covered up so there you go now Guys, I can't stress enough how much I use this Bondic stuff I got. I, I got some earlier videos where I literally fitted, fixed an air mattress with it. Now, the air mattress did come down, but it was like two months later and it took a three-year-old bouncing on it and doing flip-flops before the air come out of that rascal. That's the gospel truth. But that Bondic, I make everything... If I need it, I made parachutes the other night for a car, right out of the blue. I, I got Play-Doh, as I use is Play-Doh. I've learned, I keep a little vial thing here with uh, vegetable oil in it. And I press my like, carburetor into the bonding that I need. And I pop it out. And after I take the mold, the, the, the original carburetor out, 
I take a dab of vegetable oil and line the Play-Doh with it. And then I take the bondic wand. For you guys that's never seen this thing, it's a miracle tool for a modeler. If you want, let me know. I'll do a video on this, how I make carburetors, parachutes, all kinds of stuff. Gauges. Those three temp gauge thingies. I make these. This one I've made about 10 of them out of and use. You know, it's got the oil temp and pressure gauge on it. There you see some Play-Doh stuck in the middle of this one. But a little alcohol will clean these up. It takes the Play-Doh right off. And then uh, press that into this Play-Doh stuff right here that I use. And then once you press it in and you, and you pluck this out, take your brush with a little vegetable oil. I mean a dab. Don't slab it. But rub that in there. Then you take the Bondic thingy. I guess I'm doing it now. But I'll actually do a video the other night. So you pump the end of this off. And this tube here, this stuff comes out. It's, it's don't hurt you. It's It feels weird. Like a petroleum type thing. But you got to do it in layers. You got to squirt and fill the end in the bottom. Like the gauge face plate. Do all that first. Turn the light on. Boom. See that? hit it with the light and it gets rock hard like right now and you go back and you do another layer hit it with the light do another layer hit it with the light and three or four or five layers later you got it it's done and then paint it wash, wash it off a little soap and water and paint it now what i've been doing this is slick as heck look look see here hang on i take my wires and I'll mold three or four wires into the back to make, you know, resemble like it's wired in, like this switch box. See that? I've actually, the last two layers of Bondic, I laid the wires into the mold, squirted Bondic in the next layer, and hit it with the light, and it molds the wires in. That's a switch box I made for a car I'm getting ready to do. But... I won't be I wouldn't do a car without that bondic. You get us, you know, a side of a bumper seam or something like in Barracudas where that don't sit right back in on the valis. There's the gauges I do. There's the wires that's molded right into it. Put that underneath the dash. And you kind of run these wires down, make it look good. Dress them up through the firewall, run them over to the computer, whatever. It looks just cool as heck. But uh in Barracudas, how them valises sit on the back of them, you always get a gap. I'll glue mine. I'll do it. I'll set that body up. I'll glue that valis on. And when that gap's in there, I hit Bondic from the back side of the bumper on the inside. Hit it with the light. Do it two or three times. And it's as smooth as a baby's butt on the outside. No sanding. And then just spray paint the car and shoot it. You can't even tell. I don't. I can't believe I built this long and never had that uh, Bondic. Also, it's called 5 Second. And once you buy it... Uh, the light lasted me about three and a half months last time, and I used it a lot before the ball burnt out. Now, I got it up here in parts. I took it apart. I'm looking for a ball. I'm going to go to Ace True Value tomorrow if the wife will take me and go in and look for me. <laughs> I don't walk much these days. But uh, carburetors, I was going to looking for my Bondic when I get babbling here, and I laid it down on us. I got to cut this video or y'all quit watching them. Oh, here. But the Bondic, this light lasts three or four months or so. This tube pops out like that, see? And then you got your applicator end here. So you buy like, I've seen these like four or five of them. Buy four get the one free for like $24 or something on Amazon. Okay? This don't go in here. You just put that in there like that. That just holds it. You squirt from this end, fill the hole, lay a layer, hit the light lay a layer hit the light so i'll do a video if y'all want i'll make it i'll lay out a carburetor and a tachometer if you find a real cool tack you love make a mold of it bondic you want up throw it in one of these little baggies like i do there's carburetors there's a carburetor i'll show you a carburetor i did this is handy 
tunnel ramp systems. You got two cars per car, and you only got one laying there. It's like, what the hey do I do now? Look at that. Make you one with the bond deck. There's another one I did. This one was off them rope, them uh, Cudas. Them real high seated ones. So, man, I swear by it. Absolutely do. But that's it. Any questions on the wiring? It's the same thing you do if it's a Hemi. You just drill the holes right through the top of the engine, the valve cover for the Hemi, and that's easier. Believe me, the Hemi is a lot easier. The, they pop right through, and, and they're easier to reach. So that's it. That's how I wire. That's how I make my distributor. That's how I wire my engine. Any questions, hit me up. I'll be glad to help. You want to see a video next? I know a couple guys want seat belts. You, you got to buy the hardware. You got to have the hardware to do them right. Or I can do a video on a poor man, how I do it. I just take bare metal foil and I cut little triangles or hexagons off and glue them on the end of a paper I painted black. Hell, I got one laying here somewhere. I had it the other day. I keep a little piece of paper and I'll paint it black. And as I need seat belts, I just cut them off. I trim it off and use paper. You can't tell. Again, it's smoke and mirrors, you know. They see what they want to see. But that's it. Al Spence here for Golf Custom Models, guys. Thanks for tuning in. Thanks for taking the time to watch how I do my engines. I hope it helps somebody. If it helps one person out there, it's worth my time. Um, you need help on anything else, ask me. If I can, I'll do a video, I promise. Just you guys take care of each other. Be nice. Help somebody out if they can. It's a tough place out here. Life is not easy. So you guys take care and I'll talk to you later. Al Spence out.